afternoon, good evening or good morning from wherever you're joining us from today. My name is Sarah and I'm the Program and Event Manager at The Reactor in Sydney. Welcome to another Microsoft Reactor live stream event. Uh, today will be our fourth and final episode of our What in the Wordle series with uh, Renee Noble, who you can see here on our screen. So for anyone that's joined us for the first time today, we'll just give you a little bit of background. I'm just going to take off Renee's screen because I think she's having some technical difficulties. Oh, there we go. We finally shifted <laughs> to the right screen. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, so I'll just give you a bit of background on Renee. So she is a self-proclaimed Jane of all trades. She's worked in government doing ML and Python backend, full stack in the ed tech startup sector and dabbles with embedded tech. In her spare time, she also leads the girls programming network for women and girls to realize their potential as techie. She's also started her own business to help bring uh, exciting coding opportunities to kids and teachers, which you can see in the background behind her there. Um, and I forgot to mention at the beginning, Renee is our regional cloud advocate for Microsoft in Sydney, if we miss that part of the intro. So today we'll be speaking for um, probably the full hour and we'll have questions in there as well. So do ask them in the comment section and we will try and answer as many as possible um, throughout. This will also be available on YouTube as well. So you can use the same link to watch this on demand after or the episode will be available on the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel um, straight after today. And we'll share with you a link for our feedback survey as well. So that helps us to curate our future topics. So if you have time to fill that out with the event code, which we'll share at the end, that would be great. But for now, I'll hand the floor over to Renee to kick off the session. So thanks, Renee, and over to you. Thanks so much, Sarah, and lovely to have you all here for the final episode of the What in the World All series, uh, entitled Robot Brain. We'll be doing some natural language processing and some machine learning today. Uh, so very excited to have you here, especially if you joined us for all the episodes. That's super exciting. Or if you've caught up with them on the recording, please do jump in the chat. If you have any questions at any time, I've got it open on my other screen so I can see and, yeah, answer your questions as we go along when, when you want your answers. So to kick off, first, we, let's flash back to last week's episode. We made a Wordle Solver bot. And the question I had during the week is, is the Wordle Solver bot better than me? At Wordle, that is, or, you know, maybe in all of life, I'm not sure. P possibly the Wordle thing. Uh, so from the Solve Games episode, I went, okay, let's test out the Game Solver on all of the episodes and uh, all of the words we've had from Wordle that I've done so far so I can compare it to myself uh, versus, you know, the new bot and see, can, does it beat me all the time? Uh, what's, what's the go, basically? Uh, so, yeah, I ran it for every Wordle that I had played. I even factored in that time that they changed the daylight, uh, the, you know, uh, boundary of when you got a new word for the day. So it's played the exact same games as me up till Monday's word. Uh, there is no no spoilers for today in here, I promise. So I ran, you know, the various different games. We saw, you know, it's using our first word we discovered in the first week. Yeah, so this is just the words that's happened this week. So I saw, okay, it's doing pretty well. It beat me some of the days. So it did beat me, uh, it tied with me for movie. It... Uh, beat me with only getting two for sauté, but it is because it probably didn't do mistakes like this where you're really tired and you do word all the first thing when you wake up and you just forget to move one of the letters sometimes, even though know, it obviously doesn't go there. Uh, so, yeah, one point to the bot there, uh, one point to me on allow and another point to me on renew, but that has gone pretty close. And then another point to me um, for what the word was on Monday. So uh, I went, okay, it's going pretty well, but like not as good as me, but like maybe we should check it over time to see what on average it does. Cause maybe this week it's just, it's only five pieces of data. So it might be an anomaly. So I ran it again for every word that I've played. So that was 85 words up to Monday. And if we go, it's doing all of them. And let's see what the results were like. So we have the distribution. So we're going to make this graph today because having graphs is really good when we want to compare our data and see how it compares between different versions of a bot. 
um, or and, and you as well. Uh, so we can see it's played the 85 games, but doesn't have that same 100% win streak like I do. It does have a very similar distribution um, compared to me, but it doesn't have quite as many like, you know, twos and slightly skewed towards the five or six, but barely notable. Um, but yeah, it's all in that streak. It's all about the streak for a lot of people. Um, I'm actually more of a distribution person myself, but uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't quite keep up. So it has lost a couple of games and its max streak is, streak is 28. So why isn't it doing as well as me? Well, the thing is we didn't really tell it anything about like what words it should be choosing other than statistics about where the letters are placed in the word and what letters occur in words. So it's all about statistics of letters, uh, but it doesn't actually know anything about the English language. And as we know as Wordle you know, lovers is that words will only be the answer if there's something that people generally know. So things like commas, pumas, I don't know, hulse, bodge, they're never going to be the answer. But it did guess podge, bodge and wodge and they, they weren't going to be it. It was obviously dodge. So yeah, that's its kind of issue at the moment. So today in episode Rod Robot Brain, we're going to be giving it some more intelligence with some nat natural language processing data science. We'll do a little bit more Matplotlib to get those graphs happening. Uh, so we'll be kicking off with playing the game multiple times, as I did in the demos, and graphing the results. And then we'll be setting up natural language processing on Azure. It's super simple to just do some processing to kick out uh, file that will give you all the vectors you're going to need to do the calculations I've done here. Uh, we're going to do some calculating similarities uh, based on the vectors. And I'm actually going to do today, uh, the question really is, does the Simpsons make you better at Wordle? And I'm going to get to why that is the question of the day when we get there. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it, I think it's going to go pretty well. Uh, so then we're going to add this similarity-based scoring to our existing scoring system because we really want to give it an opportunity to learn the English language and guess more common words. So we're going to try and up the common word guesses compared to those weird words we saw on the previous slide. And then we're going to run it and see what the verdict is compared to our solver from last week. So let's kick off with making some games and a graph. So let me just grab up my... Whoop, let's grab our code. Everything's gone a bit weird. Sorry, folks. Okay. See my beautiful desktop, which has far too many things. Well, everything likes to rearrange itself sometimes when I go live with my uh, screen view. So let's grab VS Code. Great. What in the world? world all? That's what we want. And we're going to jump over to our solver from last week first. So this is a copy of the solver. This will all be up on GitHub uh, as well. Uh, but this is just the same solver file that we left off with last week. Except for this. This can all go. So actually, we had these parts in here last week. But my file's mixed up. So we've got, I've got the answers, so no peeking. Uh, we'll get we'll get to all of that in just a second. Uh, yeah, and this. Okay, that's where we left off last week. And so what we're going to be starting first with is getting rid of these notifications. Uh, and then I'm going to kick it off into... I need to get all my notes up. Everything has gone awry. So let's find my other notes. Okay, great. Now we can actually do some stuff. So what we want to do first is make it so that the game can be played multiple times and we can tell it what we want it to do for the, uh, for the different games. So we want to tell it the answer so we can, uh, because we could generate it inside the game that we created last week, which is up here. It's a solver up here, um, we, but this time we want to be able to give it the answer. So I've added to here answer equals none. And we've got two options here. So 
I'll go through them one at a time. So you could just play it as we did last time. This is a keyword argument, so you can leave it out if when you call game, and if you don't have it, then it would just assume none. But what we're doing here is we're saying if it's none, so the default, maybe you haven't even provided this at all, then we're going to do what we previously did, which was generate answer. Uh, but if you have provided an answer, we are going to set the answer to be that answer. So we're going to do this, use this to run the game many times uh, by setting the answer to the various answers that we've had since I started playing in probably about January. So we're going to need, well, first we're going to, we're going to need to put in the answer. And we could start off with like something like, uh, yeah, and we could just run it and should go. Oop. And we need to CD into our episode um, three. That's my hot tip for VS Code. If it doesn't run and it just says you didn't have the file, it's because you're in the wrong directory when you tried to run your code. So let's try it again. Ah, I have gotten, I didn't add back my answer after I just removed it. Oh, I did add it. Okay, interesting. Uh, into the solver. I put it in the wrong one. There we go. We'll pop this out and put it into the game where we want it to be. So we're going to set up the game as of now, now with there as the answer. And if we run it, now the game, instead of having hello, which is our default answer, it has there. And we can see that the solver guesses it in three. So next up, we want to do that, but for all the answers we've had for the lot for 85 days. We've got this. And then I'm going to say, for answer in answers, we're going to play the game. And we're going to set it to be not there, but answer instead. Okay, so then we've given it, we've made a solver, and then we're going to play the game. And this part we haven't done yet. So when we play the game, we don't want the game to just print out and then to go away and die forever. We want it to give us back the results and any data that we might want to later do our analytics. So I've said we want the win, what, how many turns it took, and the view, which is the love hearts that get printed out, these ones, um, the final view. So I'm going to go and add that to our game. Let's get rid of the solver for now. So inside the game, okay, so yes, we've got that here. So previously we had break, which just said, okay, well, they've guessed the word, then we just want to break and skip to the end of this. But instead, now we are returning true, which is, hey, you won, true. Uh, we want to print out I plus one. Uh, we want to return I plus one because we're going for I, so it counts in how, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, but we're doing I plus one because we don't want our graph to be zero indexed. So this would give us one to six. And then the view is the love heart printing out that we had for the last one. So the latest updated one. For the other version, we've got for the losing case, you get false, you didn't win. Uh, you don't get the number of turns because it doesn't get to go in your graph. And you get the view again. So that's what we get when we uh, return that from our game. So now we've got all that data, we do need to put it into something. So I'm going to get three places we're going to store this data when it comes back. So I've got the views, which is just a list of all the views and a list of all the wins. We, and these will all be in the same order. So if we want to match them against, again later, we can just zip all of those together. And we've got a distribution default dictionary. So with this, we want to uh, create you know, a graph of one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we want to add every time we get another win um, of what number, how many guesses it took us. So uh, that's why we've gone with a default dict of an inch. So it's going to start off with zero, even if you haven't seen something of a distribution five before. And so we know from the previous episodes, default dictionaries are my favorite. 
So we'll grab some more code and we're gonna put it inside of our loop. So what we do is we get the view that we got back, we put it into our collection of views, we get the win we got back, we put it into our list of wins. And for the distribution, we say, okay, it took you five turns or four turns or whatever it is. And we're going to add plus one to that distribution. Okay, cool. So now the things we have to do that are left, um, uh, let's just print them out. Cause I think we're gonna do this the easy way and not put it all together because we want to get and do some more map plot lib and that's just fun to do in um, Jupyter Notebooks. I also want to print out the answers that it gets wrong and what it did for them because I just think that'll be fun to see, you know, what ones it didn't do and just put some prints in between so we can see clearly where this has gone wrong. Okay, so I'm going to do, it's going to use zip as I said earlier and look like this. So these are really bad bear anyways. But we're going to say A for answer, W for win, and V for view. Uh, so we're zipping all the answers, all the wins, and all the views. So they all go back together with their matching ones from their games, we say. And then we're going to get one answer, one win, and one view at a time. And we're going to see if they didn't win, then we want to print out the correct answer was answer. And if and then the view. And then we're going to print just an empty line, I think, at the end, just so we get some more space around it so it can, they don't bunch up. So let's give it a go and see how it does. Off it goes. Okay. So these are all the ones that it got wrong, got wrong, got wrong. So it got, I think, five wrong. Yeah, here we go. Five were none, which means they were the uh, they were the ones that didn't have a thing to put in the graph. Okay, so those are our uh, graphable things, which we'll get to in a second. And then we can see that it didn't get gorge, it didn't get frame, because it's doing weird things like brame and grame uh, or shake. That was kind of a hard one I remember on that day because you had a lot of options, as you can see here. Dodge, as we saw in the uh, slides earlier, and Gatch. Look, I think a lot of people had problems on this day that watch and batch and all could have been options, but uh, Gatch is not a good guess, bot. So let's let's fix that up a bit. Um, but first, let's make some graphs. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna borrow this one here. I'm jumping over to my. Do I have? I didn't prepare one earlier. Okay. Graph distributions, I did. Okay, so I'm going to pop this in here, which is our data. But as I said, we're going to be lazy, actually. I could, you know, programmatically remove the none, but actually I'm just going to do this because we just want to make a nice little graph. And we don't need to do everything programmatically, especially when they have an hour to do it. So now we're going to jump over to uh, making the graph first up. Uh, as soon as I can find the code I prepared earlier. As you saw, I had a lot of fun with uh, getting getting everything set up because I had to restart my computer one minute before the stream started because it just loves to not let me share my screen every every couple of every couple of weeks when Chrome or something gets updated. So where is this? file. I'm sure it's going to turn up any second now. Please do ask any questions in the chat. Jack's got the right idea, put Chrome on blast there. That's that's what we want. Uh, where is it? I 
hope you know, it hasn't eaten my files in um, doing all of these restarts. Hmm. Well, it really doesn't seem to be here. So that's fun. Let's just give it a quick second. Maybe I saved it in a bad place because that sounds entirely something like something I could have done. Sorry, gang. Computers, aren't they delightful? Actually, I reckon I know what I've done. What we've done is it's in here, something I prepared earlier. Okay. Because I wanted to use our amazing stuff from last week. That's where it was all along. Okay. So let's give that a go now that we've finally got it. Okay. So we're going to start out by sorting our list of data, which has now disappeared. Where is it's our CSV? We don't need a CSV open. We want our plot distribution. No, we want this week's plot distribution. Graph distribution. There we go. Okay. So we're going to start out by sorting our items that are in the dictionary. So we've done this in previous weeks. So we get our data distribution because that's what we've done elsewhere okay we get that distribution data and then we get the items which is the key and value as a tuple each of those and we want to sort up set them in the reverse order just so they get you know one two three four five six or six five four three two one um, and then we want to get the x and y for each of those out so we're doing a list comprehension so we're just getting the of each of those tuples which you know be three and eighteen and five and 12, we just want to get firstly the three and the five and the four and the six and the two, which will now be in order. And then we want to get the Y, which is all the corresponding values, 18, 22, et cetera. Okay, we are going to want matplotlib because we love matplotlib. Uh, put this at the top. And then this is a simple graph. It's nothing as crazy as we did a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we're going to start, we are doing a, something a little bit idly looking, something with subplots because it's going to help us put those extra labels on it at the end. So it says subplots, but we're still actually just doing the one plot, but we want to be able to label it fancily. Okay, so we want to do a horizontal bar chart, uh, which is what we're doing here. So I'm setting the X and the Y. I've also set it to the word all green color, and the labels are going to be the Y axis numbers. And we want them to appear at the end of the line. Um, so on the graph, maybe I can jump back to here. So we see that it's got the 2 and the 18. So we've got to do some stuff to make that happen. So we're going to add the bar labels, which are what those correspond to. Um, and then we're going to do plot that show. We're going to run that. And we're going to set that we want to run this version of Python. And then it'll give us these graphs. Except we see it goes at 65432. Um, I don't know where our one went. Of course, it doesn't have one. Oh, yes, we do want to give it a one, though, because, you know, there is, it appears on the Wordle graph, even if you've never got a one. So we're just adding that in manually as well. Um, but we also see it starts with six and ends with two. But we would like it to go from lowest, uh, lowest to highest at the bottom. So you can also add a thing that inverts the axis. So we're going to pop that on here as well. And then we're going to hit run. And we have our beautiful graph. OK. So now we have a graphing technology that we can use to compare our different uh, Wordle bots. So we now have the data comparison technology we need to improve our bot and then do that proper data science. So doing data science, you do want to have a hypothesis 
Uh, and I think our hypothesis for today is going to be that The Simpsons makes you better at Wordle. Um, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. So we've got our game data. And now we're going to talk about what is NLP. And this will let us know how The Simpsons might be able to make our Wordlebot better. So uh, NLP, natural language processing, is basically using maths and computer science to give computers an understanding of language, not just of words, because as we saw, we could give it an understanding of letters and words and statistics around them, but it doesn't really know anything about how the words relate to each other or how common the words are or how you would use words. So that's what you use natural language processing for. And what we're going to do today is we're going to use a... Um, an existing technology called word to vector or word to vec. Um, so if you want to Google it, it's word, then the number two, and then vec. Um, and this is, I've drawn up a three dimensional space. We're actually going to use a hundred dimensional space today. Uh, but imagining this is a three dimensional space with X, Y, and Z axes. And you might have all these different words that are put into it because we basically give the computer a bunch of stuff to read and each relates the words to each other based on you know, how often they're used in sentences together or how often they're not or used in bigger texts together, et cetera. And it can calculate a space, in our case, 100 dimensions of space for how they relate to each other. Uh, and for each thing, you can then get a you know, n-dimensional, in this case, three-dimensional, or in our case, when we do our natural language processing, 100-dimensional um, vector for any given word. And then you can do a bunch of maths with those vectors to compare them and see how similar or distant they are from each other. So we could then get vectors for these two different ones and say how similar are dogs to cats, for instance, and in terms of the use in the English language. And probably good, like they're both animals, they're both used in these contexts, so probably going to be pretty similar. So The Simpsons comes into this. Uh, because uh, I was, I thought the, a good thing to do to work out what are some common words would be to maybe get a list of words that you should know, like that commonly year 12 students graduating school should or would know. Because word or words are never too hard. They're never too domain specific, like you know, really about biology or legal things or whatever. They're pr fairly general knowledge words. So I was like, okay, I'll look for that. But I couldn't actually find one of that those kinds of sets of words. But I did find while I was looking for it, which is on this URL, but it doesn't look fantastic right there. It's got a bit messed up. But a list of the 5,000 most common words in The Simpsons. And then I went, huh, that's actually a pretty good data set. Um, that's words that people generally know. It's a very common show, you know, accessible to teenagers and adults around the world. So does The Simpsons make you better at Wordle? Can we say, hey, if you're a word that's near a word that's used in The Simpsons commonly, uh, then you're more likely to be a word that could be a Wordle answer. So that's how we're going to today answer the question, does The Simpsons make you better at Wordle? So now it's time to set up our Azure machine learning instance with our word to vector algorithm. So I've made a video of this because it does take a little while to set up your um, Azure machine learning uh, instance because it does take a little while to kick up each of the different services. Uh, so I'm just going to play that through and show you setting up a machine learning um, job first. So we're setting up our machine learning uh, project in a workspace. So we set up a resource group, which is like, this is kind of the project. And then it's a bunch of advanced stuff, not important. Go and create it. And then we just wait for it to kick up. While we are waiting for it to set up, actually, you have to wait for it to set up before you keep going. And then you can jump to the uh, machine learning um, studio. So next up, we need to create. Oops, I'm back in time. We need to create a, some computing resources. So this is the stuff that does the thinking on the cloud for you. Uh, as you can see, I'm making a typo that will follow us for the rest of our lives. Uh, so we also need some cl compute clusters. So these are kind of the different computing resources in your compute group. 
Uh, so I've set one of those up on this free student account. You can get up to one node in your cluster. Okay. And then what we're doing here is we are setting up some data sources. So uh, here we go. We need some data sources. So we're starting off by adding our uh, Wordle words. So what we're going to do here is turn our Wordle, all of the words we're allowed in Wordle, into vectors. So we need to add that data set first. So I'm saying it's all our Wordle words, Wordle words, and it's tabular data. Important to note you need that for your word to vec and it's just gonna be a list of words. So it's like a one co column of a table, but that's plenty. Uh, that's tabular data, even if it doesn't look like it. Here we go, all our word or words. And then we create that. And now we are over to, to the designer. So we're gonna set up our pipeline here. So, the first thing we're going to do is grab our data set that we've just added with all our word or words. And the next thing we're going to do is add our convert word to vector. Finally, we want to output that into a file that's going to be stored on Azure Blob, but it's easy to just access it's just on the cloud. So first up, we're clicking on our uh, convert to vector uh, node. And we want to say, hey, we want to use the pre-trained English model. So you can train these yourself. You can add for instance, if I had a bunch of words, maybe it's like all the legal dictionaries and a bunch of legal you know, textbooks, I wanted to add that and just train it on that. We could do that with one of the um, WordToVec or Fast Text, which reads it and then trains its own model. But I actually just want all of the pre-trained English model that already exists to compare my words to that. So we're going to use that. Uh, we're going to grab the column, which in this data set is the first column because it's the only column. Um, there we go, it's called line. And then we're gonna set the maximum number of words in the vocabulary to 50,000, just cause I wanna get all of them and I don't want to cut it off at 10,000. And we just want the minimum instance to be one word cause we only include each word once in our data set. And it would make sense if you were doing it with a bigger corpus as you would call a body of text to if you, a word only appears once, it might be a name or something, and you don't want that to be included. But because we've set up something that's only got our word or words or only included once, we do want to say that it should be once is allowed. So finally, we're going to export the data. We just need to set up a name for that to go to. So we're going to put it into the Azure Blob storage, into the workspace storage for this blob. So it's already set up. And we're going to make it go into... Uh, word or words output. So this is where all of our data is going to end up with all of our vectors, one word, and then a hundred numbers in a list. Uh, we do need to set this compute resource, which we set up earlier, which is now all ready to go. Uh, so we set that and then we hit submit and then we wait for a while. So we give it a little name for the experiment. So I've called it word or words and Yep, and then we wait and I've sped this up 5,000% five, 5, and it's done. Great. And now we can go in and we can access that by downloading our Wordle file. So there we go. If I open it in a spreadsheet, you do need to add the .csv extension to it. But you can see that we have uh, a bunch of numbers. This is 100 things wide. It's all centered around the point zero zero. Uh, but you also notice that some of these are just a row of zeros, and that means that the uh, data set, which is like a 8 billion Wikipedia words or something, is what the uh, pre-trained model is trained on, has never seen that word before. So it's probably not one that you want to include in when you're guessing for Wordle. So that's really helpful as well. So we'll factor that in in a second. Uh, but yes, that is our trained data set. Uh, and I've also done the same thing for my Simpsons uh, data, but to note, I'll also include the Simpsons data set that I've uh, found, but um, you do need to change the column because it does have a couple extra columns because it's got the you know, order of frequency and the number of appearances and stuff. So you'll just need to change that data set, um, that column, if you do want to do this yourself. Okay. Oop, we've lost the full screenedness. Okay. No? Okay. Great. Let us continue on. Back to this screen. And ooh, it's 
got a mind of its own. Okay, we're ready to go again. Excellent. So we now want to uh, get all those texts. So I've added them all in here before because we we want to have them all access accessible. Ooh, I don't know why this doesn't have any numbers in it, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, we've got our Simpsons output. Uh, we can see here uh, things like Homer and Mom and things, they all appear in here. So this, you'll note, isn't just five-letter words, but that's not important. We just want to see you know, something like family and time might be related or um, things that can relate to our five-letter words aren't necessarily five-letter words. So they're all in there, and we'll be using them shortly to compare to mathematically. And we've got our word or words as well. Here they all are. Okay, so now we're going to want to grab all of those uh, words out firstly, and then we can start processing them to get you know our relationships. So just got to grab my next file. Okay. So I'm going to make another file in here and I'm going to call it, I'm just going to call it NLP data pi because we're just going to use it and we're going to draw it back into our solver. Um, but just to keep it a bit more tidy, we'll put it here. So first up, I'm going to want to read in the vectors. So I'm going to make a file called read vectors and I'm going to make a dictionary with da called data. Uh, and I'm going to want to go through one of my files, so whatever file has been passed in, and I'm going to use a CSV library um, just because they're a really nice, easy way to deal with CSV files, of course, and a little easier um, than dealing with it as a text file because it kind of breaks things up into lists readily. So we're going to grab this line, which is open the file and create this CSV reader object from the CSV file that handle that is open now. Uh, and then for row, I want to go through each row at a time, um, but I'm noting that the first row in here, ooh, Sarah's got a good question. Why export to a blob instead of a file? Uh, so that is because blobs are just the way we store file uh, files in the cloud within Azure. So it's just an unstructured data format, so unlike a database. Um, so it's just a way to have a file and then you can download it and it is a file. So yeah, good question, but they're kind of one and the same, uh, but it's just, we put it in the cloud and it's called a blob because it could really be anything. Uh, thank you, Sarah. So uh, we're going to go for each of the rows. Uh, we want to go through them, but the first one actually is, uh, a heading line and we could just delete that manually, but we might forget to do that. So I'm actually just going to put a variable here that says it's the top line currently. And then we're going to deal with the top line first. Uh, and all we're going to do is we're going to read it. And then we're going to say that it's no longer the top line and we can skip to the next thing because we don't actually care about the top line um, at all. So next up, we want to get the row data. So this is um, the vector so not the word we're cutting off the first word because we only start at one with the swiss comprehension so we're saying here we go get just the vector part get rid of the first thing um, and then we want to convert all of those to a float so this is a list comprehension that says hey get this list go through each item in it and make me a new list but it's just that list but everything's a float now so now we've got that I do want to do one more thing because we saw that they were had all of those zeros. So I've said, if any of the items are not, ze not zero, then we know it's actually a valid thing. The algorithm had heard of it before. So we're going to say, so this a new interesting keyword, any. So you can give any, um, I'll get it up here actually. So we go Python three. And if I do any of a list, true, false, false, any of them are true, then it will tr say true. But if I do the same thing, and they were all false, it would return. Oop, 
False. So we're going to use that to say, we're going to go through, hey, list comprehension here, go through each item and see if it is equal to zero. And it's going to be, uh, see if it's not equal to zero. So if it's not equal to zero, it's going to be true. Uh, so it might, you know, we might get all falses here or we might get a bunch of trues because actually it's a thing we've heard of before. And if it is valid and known, then we're going to add that data to our dictionary for the word for row zero. So that was, let's just grab that again. So we get the word and then that item, unless we get the word and it's all zeros and then we don't care about it and we're just going to throw it away. Um, because that's good. And by not having it in our list, we're going to know that it were, didn't work out. So next up, oh, we need to return our data, of course. Okay. So next up, I want to find out the similarity between two different things, um, actually between two different sets of things. So what I want to do is go through every word but in my Wordle list. So And for a word, I want to go, let, go through every Simpsons word and say, oh, yep, this is how similar they are. And what I want to do ultimately is get the maximum value of that. But for this one, we're just going to generate a list of how similar it is to every other word. Um, I'm not actually going to do this one live because it doesn't take about five minutes to run. And I've got a data set I prepared for you earlier. So, but just to see how it all comes together, if you want to run it at home yourself, or maybe you want to run this for a different data set. I had a bunch of different ideas of what I could have done. Um, for data sets, but also you just generally for like natural language processing. So maybe you have a really cool idea and I'd love to hear about them. Uh, so I'm going to set up a default dictionary. Everyone knows I love them uh, here. Oop, we're inside of this function. That's why it's gone funny color. So from collections, import default dictionary. Uh, so we're setting up our similarities. And what we're going to do now is I want to go through the I'm passing in two sets of data. These are both going to be dictionaries um, of vectors. So just like what we've made here in this previous function. Um, and one of them is going to be our words, Wordle list of vectors, and one's going to be our Simpsons list. So I'm going to start by saying, I want to go through the first one, which is going to be our Wordle list, go through each of those items. And then for each of those items, I also want to go through our uh, Simpsons list, which is our data set too. Um, so yet for each of those, I'm going to do a calculation, which I'm going to call my similarity calculation. This is a cosine distance formula, which you can get with, I need to import it, scipy, sci -pi, so it's scientific Python spatial. So it's comparing our spatial dimensions for us. So dealing with spatial data. Um, which is our 100 dimensional space. I'm going to get our similarity, which is going to be this cosine similarity, which is one minus the spatial distance. So the bigger the number, the better they are. And we're going to use that to multiply by our um, answers, our, our scoring system later. So that's why we want big numbers to be better so we can multiply them with that. So to get, and then we just have one thing to do with that data, which is just to put it in our similarities thing. And I only care about the Wordle words. So I'm just going to say word one. So that's our Wordle word um, we want to append. So we set up a default dictionary with a list. So I'm just going to make a list one at a time of every similarity to the Simpsons words. So I'm going to append that one similarity. And then I'm going to return all of our similarities end of the function. Okay. Oh, nice little function coming up next, which is max closest. So this one, put it inside the other one again. Get out of there. Okay. For this one, what I want to do is take each of the words and their list of similarities to the Simpsons words. Okay. I just want to find the one you're most similar to because if you're, you know, really similar to one of the words, that's good enough for me. You're probably a common word. Um, but if you're like not super similar to any of the words, then you're not going to get a very good score for this maximum. Uh, so then you can, uh, then that's going to be your best score. And it's not going to help you very much word if you're trying to get selected by the word or bot solver. So, um, so I'm going to say max scores is 
you can see this coming. It's another default dict because I love them. Uh, it's going to be an integer this time. So, and then we're going to go through each of the words. So I probably didn't even need a default dict here, but we're going to leave it um, because... Oh, we do want a default dict because we're going to return, if something tries to look up a word that's not in it, then it would be useful to give them back zero. That's why I've done a default dict. We're actually going to store it in a file and people are going to have to make it into a default dict for themselves later. Um, but just if we wanted to pull this directly into our solver, which you could, just takes a very long time to run, then it would be useful to have it be a default dict. So we're going to go through all of the words and that list of similarities in the similarities that we've passed into this function. So they're the ones that came out of here. We'll pop, pop them into here. And then I want to find the maximum one. So I'm going to say max scores. And then for the word, just one word, it's going to equal the max of the sims sim similarities. And then the last thing to do is return the max scores. OK. Cool. Now I'm going to just do one function that puts all of these bits together that we've just done, which is going to be, we want to read the vectors. We call this def get scores. And it's just going to be a function that doesn't have any parameters. It's just going to just a little bundle up all the stuff. So we're going to get our first data set, which is our word or words. Then we're going to get our Simpsons words vectors as well. And then we're going to get our similarities using the similarity function we wrote above. Get similarities for two lists. And then we're going to get the maximum scores using the one we just wrote here, max closest. And then we're going to return the scores. OK. I'd also like to save these to a file. So I'm going to get, I'm just going to add in a little if main equals name equals main at the bottom here. Uh, and this is just saying only run this if you run it from this file, because we're going to want to import this file. But I'm actually just going to, going to run it locally to generate all of these things. Um, but I'm not going to run it on the stream because we'd just be sitting here waiting for my computer to tick over for a while. Uh, so last things are we want to save the scores. So I'm not going to go through this too closely. It's just open a file, write to the file. It's writing a CSV using the CSV library again, and then just writing each row, which is the key and the value as a list. So it's just going to be comma separated there. And then I want to do the reverse of that, which we're going to use in our other program when we want to load up that file that we've generated, that I've generated in advance. So that's creating our default dictionary. As I said, we want to be able to return zero if something's not known in there. Uh, going through the file, reading the CSV, and then adding them back. So just the thing we've just popped into the, into the file, we want to get it back out into our default dictionary. So that's all ready to go. Uh, so now it's time to take a look at our solver and add that all into there. So we're going to want this function here. Um, because I have already done in here, I've got a file that I've called Simpsons scores Simpsons max two, I believe. I ran this a couple of times with a couple of different options. And let's take a peek at this. It's empty for some reason. Uh, so let's go and copy it from my practice one. Here we are. Oh, no, they're gone away, which is not good. Um, this is not good at all. Okay, well, we're going to do something a little bit different because I accidentally originally ran it and it added them all, all the words. So we had all our word of words, but also all the Simpsons words. But actually, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to be bothered. My other one seems to have died when my computer needed to redo all of its things. So we're going to use this instead, which is completely fine because it's just got some extra data and it's not going to take us very much longer to load it up. So back to our solver. So now at the top, we're going to want to import our uh, NLP 
data. So now we have access to all those functions. Uh, most usefully, we have access to the one that loads everything up. So we're going to, just like we've done up here, but we got all of these uh, dictionaries that we've made, um, where we have functions for creating here. Uh, we're going to have we're going to call our load function, which is going to load up the file that we have generated already um, from the previous code. But I'm actually just going to put it near the bottom here because that's where we're working today, and I don't really mind. Um, but we're going to need it to be probably above our solver. No, actually, we don't because it's going to read all of this first. So we're going to pop it here. So we're going to do that, and now we just need to add it into our solver so that it actually makes the changes. So, um, so we want to, every time we want to uh, score something, we're going to say, okay, actually, you should probably consider how well known this word is as well. So in here, we're going to multiply the word uh, by the score that it's got from being compared to the Simpsons. So that's going to look like this. So we say, okay, here's the NLP scores. Look up my word, see how well it compared to the Simpsons, how Simpson-y is it, and then we can uh, multiply it by this. So if we pop into here, let's just look for the number, let's look for comma one. So we can see some of these are in there. So the words like could and right, they appear in the Simpsons, so they are 100% similar to our words. Uh, so they're going to get a fully right answer, but some of them are not as similar. So what's something, don't edit that. Something might be like 0 0.3. Okay, zero, Flanders is pretty common. Okay, here we go. Added at X, not very similar to the Simpsons at all. So here we go. Uh, we want to pop back to our solver. I'm also going to say that on the first guess, we don't actually care if it's a real word. We just want the most useful word. So I think we could keep using tears as our first word. Uh, so I'm setting up this variable, common words only, and I'm going to pop that into where is our into here. So we've got, currently got allow repeat wor words, um, and we're going to also set this to false is we're not using common words only, except we want it from the second term. We do want to start using common words only. So let's find out where we actually call this allow repeat words, and we're going to say common words only is also true from the second turn. So first turn, just get the best scoring one from our original data science from episode two. And from episode, uh, from here on, uh, then uh, we can just multiply it by this on the second turn. Okay, thanks, Jack. This is really helping clarify what you might actually do with machine learning data and how it works. Before it was just mystery number stuff. So yeah, if you haven't done any machine learning before, it can be like, what are your even numbers? And like, this is, yeah, interesting base level kind of stuff. Um, that's called NLP data. But yeah, this is a, like really, you, you can get into the data and see what's happening. And sometimes it's a bit more mysterious when you're doing some deep learning thing and the algorithm does all the work. But yeah, there's just a lot of a lot of vectors in machine learning. So, okay, I think this might be ready to go. Let's let's run it and see what it says. Uh, I think I've got Python open, so we're going to close that first so it can actually go. Okay. Interesting. Ah, we should actually read can't multiply sequence by non int of type float what have i done here so we've got our float here this is on line surely it's on this line here score count word times nlp scores let's just make sure i haven't done some sort of weird thing i've done this that's the same i'm pretty sure uh, NLP scores. So what if we put into our NLP file that it's not liking here today? Maybe something's gone fishy when I've done this. Let's just start by printing out 
just a couple of things in the NLP was and let's get you know the first 10 items and see what it says always good to just do some little debugging good to look at your data okay did not like that I tried to slice it I don't know what NLP scores is very interesting did we not return something from that I don't know let's pop over to our uh where we've made this NLP data. Oop, I'm just going to pop in our practice one because I don't trust uh, this one right now. Load scores. That seemed the same, so I'm a little bit concerned. Let's find out what type of data this is then. Uh, is a type. It does not like to be sliced. Oh, it's because it's a dictionary. I should have done dot items. That's what it didn't like. Okay. We need to turn that into a list because items isn't actually a list. It's an uh, iterator. So here we go. Debugging for the win. Okay. Are you going to print for us? Okay. So that seems... Fine. What are you doing to us? Robot brain code. Ah, we need to actually load in our. I think we haven't actually turned these into loads. Look, all of those. Fingers crossed. We're just seconds away from seeing the results of our science experiment, if this works. Please work. Here we go. It's happening. Great. We can see that it's only got one wrong. So let's go and back and plot our distribution. Pop that all in there. And go to our graph distribution. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna copy this so we can look at both of our graphs. Another one of these. What code? Okay. And popping this at the top. What do you say? You say no. Oh, because we've got to get rid of this, of course, and add, and add in our one. Okay. So let me collapse this one. Hide the little cell. I don't think we can. Well, we can see 10, 28, 34, 10, 2. So looking heavy around the 28 and the 34 which is looking way better than this one. It's very skewed up to three and four now. So I think we can say for sure that The Simpsons does make you better at Wordle. Uh, so hypothesis has been proved to be true, I would say, in this instance. Um, and we can also see that uh, it got like a way better percentage. So it only got one out of the uh, 30 of the 85 incorrect, um, as we saw in our code down the bottom it's gone away so we'll have to run it again here we go but yeah we can also do you know you could do to get your 
run this streak on here. You could look through here. Um, but we can see it's going to have a way better maximum streak than our previous uh, version of this. So I think that you know, ties us up there. We've done well um, on making sure that our Wordle bot is smarter because of The Simpsons. So I think that's a good thing to know for your own Wordle. If you need to watch more Simpsons, that's okay. That, that's a good thing to do. Sarah says, don't. More Simpsons watching for everybody. Sarah, Jack, thank you for watching. And I hope you watch some more Simpsons. Uh, the code from today will be up on GitHub as well as all of the data sets I've used. You can also jump in onto the site. Uh, the links up here, Sarah will also put it in the chat for us to check out. Uh, the links. Uh, we've got a link to the docs around Wordle, uh, word, word to vector, um, uh, but it's super simple to use. So I really recommend if you want to do it yourself, watching through this video and just following along because it can be a bit tricky from the docs. There's not heaps of projects or learn modules around it yet, uh, but maybe we'll make some more soon. Um, yes, but coming up, not next week actually, but the week after in April. We've got two new series coming in April. We've got Playing with Python in my first month of the Code Garden, which will be an ongoing series giving you some basics or just some little tidbits, little tips, like maybe you know, if we just look at default dictionaries or list comprehensions for one half an hour episode. So that's coming up on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time because we'll be off Daylight Savings. And we've got... Another one called Little Learns, which is coming up. This is super great if you're a student or you're learning a new technology. I'll be going through a different Microsoft technology each week for three weeks. Um, we've got Power Apps coming up. We've got uh, the Language Translation module, which is super fun uh, for our little pen pal project, um, making a little uh, translation website. And we've got uh, Azure Functions as well for some serverless computing. So yeah, that's all coming up in April. Thank you so much for coming along to uh, What in the World All for the last four weeks. It's been super fun. I hope you've really enjoyed it. But Sarah trying to join us back in. Not yet though. <laughs> Do make sure you do the survey. Um, we really appreciate if you do the surveys and it really helps us know what you liked or if we want to change some stuff as well. Oh, Sarah's disappeared. She's come back. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can. Sorry about that. Must have been with my headphones. Um, thank you so much, Renee. And thank you for hosting this series this month, the What in the World All. Um, and that will all be available um, on our YouTube channel and you can check that one out. We can share the link um, straight after this as well um, to that page where you'll be able to see all of the YouTube recordings. But if you can't find them there, you can go just straight to our YouTube channel and just search them um, as well, which we'll share with the link for you later on. Well, here it is actually, we've got the one there. Um, and also the upcoming series, as Renee's mentioned, we've also put in the chat there for April. So those are the links. Um, to the landing page for those one. And we've got our survey here as well. So if you have time to fill that out today with the event code 15790, that would be great. And that's uh, all we have time for today. So thank you so much, Renee. And have a good rest of your afternoon, evening or morning to um, everyone who's joined us today. Bye, everybody. Bye.